Oh, that's awesome. How we're designed it perfectly to get that into the eyes from that type of mechanism. Oh my gosh. I don't even think he got anything out of the guy. Just to start off the day of torture, now he's got a hammer in his hand. I love these old school like torture devices. They have them in, in museums in every country, like medieval times and even after that, of torturing people. Nobody wants their testicles and scrotums cut off. I know I don't. Hey everyone, Dr. Jordan Wagner here, ER doctor. We're gonna check out torture scenes from multiple different games. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. I'm kind of like squeamish, weirded out, but for me, it's all from a medical standpoint. So I'm excited to take a look at what's going on. Whoa, 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 what is this? What the hell's... Catching electrodes, checking, usually it's a heart monitor, but we'll see if these are actually electrical impulses that are gonna happen. So we got an EKG or e ECG, which is an electrocardiogram or just a monitor to be able to get the impulses of the heartbeat. All right, this isn't good. You get to work and uh, <laughs> I'm not here. Okay, we got jumper cables, we got pliers. This is not gonna end well for this guy. The ECG, it's going 80 beats per minute. That's his heart rate that's about normal, anywhere between 60 to 100. Normally, you'd probably be tachycardic, which is a heart rate over 100 when you're in this position where you're about to be tortured. You wouldn't have a normal heartbeat. You'd expect that maybe 130s, 140s in this situation. No. This isn't good. Breaker. No! I'm assuming that's right into the thigh, not into his groin. Into the thigh, possibly break a femur, but probably not on your first shot. But that amount of force is horrible, and it's gonna cause a lot of tissue damage before bone damage. And it looked like on the monitor too, his heart rate actually picked up. Good job, whoever's making this. Just deciding what torture device to move on to next. Pliers, going after the teeth. Not cool. So you could snap a tooth probably pretty easily with pliers. I've seen patients pull their own teeth out. We see people who just fall, hit their face, and their teeth fall out. Grabbing pliers yanking your tooth out, it's gonna hurt like hell. Dentists do it all the time, we don't do it in the emergency department, but they use anesthesia. You're using lidocaine, xylocaine, something so you don't feel it. You'll feel pressure, but not pain. And you'd still actually be bleeding pretty good out of the mouth. Next decision. This'll put hair on your chest. Take another tooth, please. <laughs> All right, we got a heart rate of 142, appropriate response. And now we got energy, this isn't good. Right to his nipples, of course, classic. It will jack up the heart. So you're causing energy potentially to the heart, which can cause arrhythmias, but you're mostly gonna cause soft tissue breakdown. You've heard of rhabdomyolysis, basically when you're exercised too much, you have muscle breakdown because it's dead tissue, which is the same thing that's happening when you burn tissue from electrocution, basically is what's happening. Besides the pain, over a longer period of time, you're gonna go into renal failure, kidney failure, because the, the, all the breakdown of the muscle tissue is gonna clog your kidneys and they're not gonna work as well. All right, I guess they had enough of that electrical torture. And we're pulling out the gas can. Or this could be bottle filled with water and they're gonna try some waterboarding. Always by the book. That's my Water torture in the wrong canister, washcloth over to basically make it even harder to breathe, to simulate drowning. You can actually have different injuries called uh, dry drowning, wet drowning, but ultimately getting vasospasm, bronchospasm into the lungs. But you also can get water in the lungs and you actually drown multiple different mechanisms. But more in the sense of the pain of not being able to breathe is super uncomfortable. This is like really good gameplay. It's like I'm watching like a show instead of a video game. It's, it's pretty impressive. My name is Mr. Tom. Uh, scalpels. So scalpel's actually good in torture. It's sharp and quick, it hurts, but at least it's making a clean wound instead of jagged if you're using any other torture device. The knife scalpel looks pretty darn sharp, but nah, it's looking like he's opening up his abdominal cavity, which is not cool. Painful when it's slow like that, obviously. The last cup I had in this chair lasted almost four years. He's not cutting deep, he's cutting just superficially through the skin. Just to start off the day of torture, now he's got a hammer in his hand. And we're hammering toes and feet, which is horrible. You're causing crush injuries. Oh my gosh. Now we're getting drills. Okay, this guy's a professional. So you're drilling, you're just gonna destroy tissue, you're gonna go into bone. We use a drill if we can't get an IV into somebody's arm, we'll actually drill an IV into somebody's bone. Oh, a fan in the face. He's not having any permanent damage that we can see, but if you're getting fanned in the face with all that blood, you're losing teeth, you're losing tissue to the face, your, your nose actually might even come off because the tip of your nose is just tissue and cartilage, and those fan blades are like going super fast in that type of force. All of a sudden, his head explodes off. 
obviously that's a little much. You're also having a ton of whiplash injury because you're going back and forth, you can have surgical injury. A lot of times that type of force can cause a C2 fracture, a dense fracture, where there's a piece of bone on your second cervical spine where it just snaps right off. I don't know, punk. Oh my gosh, look at all these blades, are you kidding me? <laughs> Okay, we're playing like a little roulette of shaking them off. It's like your own kitchen with all your knives hanging above. If they're falling from about a foot above, they must have to be the sharpest blades in the world. They're probably gonna hit, cause a little bit of a puncture wound, and then fall off. Unlikely that they're gonna go in with that much force unless they weigh like 30 pounds each coming down that hard. You're gonna still cause injuries potentially to the neck, soft tissue wounds, superficial wounds to the face, and hopefully it doesn't get in his eye because a simple wound to the eye can make a big problem. And then if you lose the fluid in the eye, if you don't get fluid back in, you're probably not gonna see again in that eye or at least have good vision. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is horrible torture. I don't even think he got anything out of the guy. I don't know what that type of machinery is, but it looks like a drill right into the eye, straight through the skull. That and the amount of force, that would go through any type of bone, because you're going through hard metal or wood to begin with, with that machinery. Now, going straight through the eye socket, there's multiple bones, go straight to the brain. If you're causing a ton of damage to the brain, you could die, but typically you're gonna be basically unconscious, altered mental status, and your heart's gonna continue to pump for a little while. Your body's still gonna be alive, but you're probably gonna be out of it. And eventually, if you don't get medical care, you're, you're gonna die. <laughs> oh. I don't want my head squished. Surprised he hasn't crushed his hand. Oh gosh. <laughs> and insult to injury, it's getting crushed in his legs besides his head. These don't come to the emergency department because they're dead, they're decapitated. Hopefully that person died instantaneously, but the body doesn't die right away. It still has a couple seconds of movement and living, and now you're gonna get crushed in the lower legs again. It's just gonna crush the tibia and fibula on that side or both sides, and bones are just flying everywhere. It kind of looks more of an explosion, but it's, it's pretty impressive. Feet are flying everywhere. Just chop the cars. They do something to the parts and back. Please. Nothing ends well with sawing someone's face. I've had patients come into the emergency department using saws and they don't turn out well. They're actually not clean wounds typically. The tissue gets destroyed and ripped. This guy's face is already half gone. You could basically fix it if it comes back into the hospital, but if he doesn't die, which you can do skin grafts. Typically skin grafts come from your legs, back of the arms, your buttocks. And then if you need any fillers, you can use cartilage, rib cartilage. This is all plastic surgery techniques. My job in the ER is get your airway, make sure you got good blood pressure, heart rate, and make sure you live to be able to get to surgery. Besides the heat on your face, you're gonna have trouble breathing because the fire is taking all the oxygen away in that area. He is now being burned alive. In this situation, you're burning the nasal passages, you're burning your oral passages, which then will cause inflammation and will slowly, not over days, but minutes to hours, where you have so much swelling that your airway closes off on its own and you asphyxiate. So one, you can't breathe because it's taking the oxygen away and then add insult to injury. Now you're having swelling of these airways and you're eventually gonna die if you don't have a tube in the way to have somebody swell around it so we can basically wait for the inflammation to go down a couple days later. But when you get thrown in the fire, you're done. Okay, just a little head trauma, facial trauma. You're gonna cause potential hematomas on the outside and then you're gonna get hemorrhaging on the inside of the brain. Epidural versus subdural. Sometimes you can get subarachnoid. It all depends what vessel in the brain is bleeding because it's almost in compartments in different sections of the skull. And we got drowning and we got some fish and you gotta eat your face. Definitely. Look at them, they're hungry. I like that the fish is still attached. Obviously that's not gonna kill you, it's just gonna cause extreme amount of pain as your flesh of your face is eaten off. And that amount of time in the water, you can hold your breath for 30 seconds to a minute of a normal person, so you're not gonna drown. It's just gonna cause a lot of pain. It's a killer fish from the underworld. <laughs> You killed my brother, Ash. Ow. So you're getting soft tissue burns, second degree, third degree burns. You're not having fourth degree burns at this point, but now you do. You can't do this. You've seen this all the time in movies, right? Electrical shocking. When you put somebody in water and you try to electrocute them, pure water is not a good conductor of electricity. It's actually all the impurities that are in the water that causes continued conduction of the energy. This guy's getting electrocuted in the face. You're gonna have more burn injuries and potentially arrhythmias to the heart. Let me go, asshole. The guy's holding on to the fan on, with his left hand and he's just gonna get chopped up into pieces. Nice. That doesn't come to the emergency department. They're dead. 
All right, we're in the kitchen. Looks like some hot grease. Well, you can get hot grease up to 400, 500, 600 degrees. That fast could have potentially melt bone, probably not, but your tissue's gone, your nerves, blood vessels. You're just gonna be a bloody mess at that point unless they're cauterized off because it's so hot. And then, of course, you're just gonna be in screaming agonal pain. You're not gonna be dead yet. Nothing like a little compressive force to your crotch and to your chest. I'd be more worried about my groin. And if you're getting your testicles traumatized and see so he's trying to block it down below, it hits his face instead. You can get testicular trauma, unlikely penile trauma there, but you're gonna have basically hematomas, blood, and it's gonna hurt like hell. And now we got some old school torture, electrocution to the brain. There is a medical treatment, so I'm gonna divulge for a second. There's a medical treatment called ECT, which is electroshock therapy. Basically in somebody who has schizophrenia schizophrenia, bipolar, they actually attach electrodes to your head and do impulse electricity to try to set and break through your moments of depression. Very few side effects. It just causes uh, a little bit of retrograde amnesia for a short period of time. And patients will say that I actually feel much better after this type of therapy. It's pretty crazy, but you're sedated. So you don't actually feel the torture that this poor guy is going through. Oh, nice. Some type of table saw. Look at those blades going right to his perineum or his groin area. You gotta watch out for your scrotum. Oh, I think your scrotum is no more. Testicles are no more. Basically, you're ripping through all the pelvic structures down there. There's a bunch of muscles down there, but that's kind of about it. Down in the groin area, especially for a dude, nobody wants their testicles and scrotum cut off. I know I don't. You know, your rectal tissue is gone. You could have some bleeding on the inside. You're gonna perforate your bowel, these type of things. You're not gonna die. You're gonna be in extreme amount of pain because your major blood vessels are running down the middle. You have your iliacs and then goes right into the distal aorta down there. Ooh, chain to the bed. This is like a horrible, like bad hospital scene. Okay, we got a video camera. I love that day he's uh, full on naked, but he's got uh, protective apron on. Strapped to a chair, never a good sign with blood all around you. Thank you, Holy. Holy cow, no. Okay, cutting off fingers with this massive tool. This is classic, right? You always hear people cutting off their fingers. It's more painful than anything. You can, with that amount of tool, you can definitely cut through bone. I even have a pair of scissors that I use at work that can cut through rib and bone if I needed to in an emergent situation. And with the fingers, you're having, all your major blood vessels are down the sides and your arteries, so you're gonna be squirting blood. Even when somebody comes in with the lacerations inside the finger, we have to even use a tourniquet on the finger to stop the bleeding to be able to fix it because it's just profusely bleeding. A lot of people think that we can get our fingers reattached pretty easily. The structures are so small. If it's a perfect cut, you might be able to get it put back on. But if it's like destroyed tissue and you, you can't get good alignment, you're not gonna be able to put the, the fingers back together. And even then we have, you have on the right hand, you can see on the index finger, you can see bone sticking out. Now you have bone sticking out with tissue basically down below it. What we have to do is basically numb up the finger and cut the bone off even more. It's called rondering. Take pieces of the bone and chunk it off so that way you have enough tissue to close it over top of it so it's not exposed and you reduce the risk of infection. But actually, they're doing it really good so you can see blood pouring out of the fingers. And now actually it's getting out of the trainer. Pretty impressive. But now you have the dexterity of trying to use your hands and actually puking. Actually, it's really good. I've never seen puke in a video game. For that situation, it's puking, it's normal. All right, saw, nice. I want to play a game. Oh, this is not gonna be good for these people. I love these old school like torture devices. They have been in museums in every country, like medieval times and even after that, with torturing people. Old school mechanics and mechanisms basically of these torture devices. Look at this thing on this guy's head. I'm assuming it's gonna snap open. Oh, oh yeah, perfect, we got an example. People get their jaws blown off. A lot of facial trauma are still alive, right? You're not injuring the heart, you're not destroying the brain. But the question is, how do you get it off, right? So that guy got lucky and his head didn't explode off. I can't breathe. Hello, Amanda. You remember me. I want to play a game. You told our friend, the detective, that I saved you. Always says this, he always wants to play a game. It's your job to cause yourself pain, to save your life. Each of you will be injected with different poisons that will slowly break down your body. Oh no, different poisons. Depends on what type of poisons they are. Different antidotes. Now we got your, your ECG monitoring. Single beat, not really helpful. Live or die. Why does this guy sit down in a chair? Oh, he's now getting injected as well. I love their single. You have no idea what the heart rate is doing, but you know it's a normal electrical activity. If you fail the trap, this cutscene will play. I don't know, let's see what happens. 
EKG monitors are now changing, but they're changing because the person's moving too, so you have no idea if it's the heart or the movement. All right, they're free. He's going down, he's going down, oh gosh. Oh, that's awesome how we're designed perfectly to get that into the eyes from that type of mechanism, but injected and then no antidote, right? So don't know exactly something that would kill you that fast. Typically, right, we inject people with like potassium chloride, but basically if you get injected with potassium chloride, it doesn't cause hemorrhage, it causes basically cardiac arrhythmias, which then your heart will stop. Other things that cause hemorrhages, even like weird infections like Ebola and Marburg or hemorrhagic fever disorders where you basically bleed out of your eyes and out of your nose and out of your ears. But I um, don't know what liquefied these people in this situation, but pretty crazy. And now you got flat line on the monitor, universal sign for death, unless they're not attached to the monitor anymore. You have tried to take your own life on multiple occasions because you cannot endure the mental pain of everyday life. Oh no. Meds, held objects, hammers, nails. Oh, that's not good. Oh! More penetrating trauma, but right through the arm. Interesting note, too. Penetrating trauma in the emergency department, gunshot wound, impaled object, knives, they're all pretty much treated the same way um, by us, basically looking for different injuries that would occur. The vascular, bone, soft tissue, nerve. Ooh, right through the right leg. Actually, so if you hit more lateral on that right leg, you'd miss major structures. The more medial or inside, you're gonna hit potential major blood vessels, the, the femoral artery, the femoral vein, and obviously through the femur. Oh, missed that one. Looks like it went through the hand too on the right side of forearm. Oh, this is getting pretty rough and torture-like. Who's playing this game? Save him, dude. Oh, he's freed. Oh, the table was going up and ripping through the tissue. That's not cool. You get stuck, you can snap bones that way. You're just ripping the tissue. But now he's free. That is crazy, okay. I didn't know that there were so many torture scenes in all these different video games. How accurate and realistic some of these scenes were was disturbing to say the least. Awesome, a lot of fun. There's so many torture scenes in there, we could dissect it even more. We'll check it out on another video. And don't forget guys, check out more videos like this one on Gameology YouTube and Facebook, and check out my YouTube channel as well as Instagram at Dr. ER. Jordan Wagner, Dio. You should have had me tied to the, the <laughs> that would have been funny. Like, shh, shh. like wrap me around too. Like, is it urine or is it actually amniotic fluid? Yeah, it's gross. It's, it's what we do. Scene from, mul mm, sorry, mul no. Can you repeat the line? <laughs>